Yeah, Zach, the latest attempt actually failed. It was a short term spending bill that did not pass the House, which means now that lower chamber has nothing to send to the higher chamber of the Senate. Even if they do pass something, they have to still negotiate with Democrats who control the Senate to make sure the government does stay open. Right now, it's set to shut down on October 1st. I serve with a lot of well-meaning people who believe we need to spend less money, and they're exactly right. But blowing the process up doesn't achieve that. I also serve with a number of sincere people who believe we don't spend enough. I disagree with them, but they're just as stubborn. Oklahoma's most senior member of Congress, Frank Lucas, giving his take on the ongoing gridlock in D.C. as lawmakers struggle to reach an agreement on how the government should be funded. The deadline to find agreement is Saturday night at midnight. On Sunday, the government will shut down, meaning federal employees will stop being paid. Here locally, that includes employees of the National Weather Service, the FAA, and Tinker Air Force Base. So I'm frustrated like a whole bunch of people are going to be next week if the government shuts down. The latest attempt in the House came Friday morning when Republicans failed to secure enough votes to pass a short-term spending bill or stopgap that would have kept the government open another 30 days. All members of Oklahoma's House delegation voted for it, including Congressman Josh Burkeen, but it wasn't enough since 21 other Republicans joined Democrats to vote no. That stopgap measure has got to have cuts in it too. And it's got to have, as we present to the Senate, real cuts and it's got to have um, border security that's enforceable. And coming up at five, we'll have more on the potential impact of this shutdown. We'll focus on what could happen to members of the military.